CataractCoach.com. High hyperopia cataract surgery. Very small eye. 32 diopter lens implanted and calculated with IOLCalc.com. So starting off here, you can see this is a small eye and not the best dilation. So the key here is not to make a baby rexus. We still want to make that five or maybe even five and a half millimeter diameter caps rexus. Don't make some three or four millimeter rexus and suffer the whole case. This is a monocular patient who was sent to Dr. Omar, who's at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, here in the USA. And he does a beautiful job, so I wanted to show you this case. And in fact, he did calculate it on iowacalc.com, which is the lattice super formula. And now let's look at the incision here. So very important to get a good incision. Notice how the incision looks big in this eye. And that's because the eye has a small white to white. It's a very small corneal diameter, but this is a small eye. Here comes the rexus. Notice how even with that skinny little cytotome going in the eye, viscoelastic wants to leak out. This is a shallow AC to begin with, and in a case like this, there's gonna be some posterior pressure. Now you may wanna loosen up the speculum here, be very cautious in getting this rexus done. You don't wanna turn out, and again, no pressure, but the patient is monocular. So getting the rexus done here, nicely making it right along, along that rexus, uh, goes along the pupil margin, in order to get it to be a sufficient size here. And so it's a little bit off our screen, but you'll see here at the end, it is completely round and intact. That's a really nice looking rexus here. If you do need to stop and put in more viscoelastic, do so. Here's the hydro dissection now using a specialty cannula here. Be very cautious, do not prolapse the nucleus out of the capsule bag in a case like this, because the AC is so shallow. So just enough hydro dissection to get it freed up, a little extra aliquot of viscoelastic going in here at the beginning. And now here comes the phaco probe. So in a case like this, you want to operate within the capsule bag. So a nice technique here to do like a stop and chop because you can debulk the central nucleus. So let's see the technique. I'm watching it for the first time with you. And so cleaning up here a little bit, a little groove down the middle. That's a nice central groove. That'll help to debulk the nucleus. And now it is a stop and chop, in fact. Good choice there, I like it. And now each half can be gently chopped and brought up to the phaco tip and aspirated pretty easily. Uh, notice it's not too dense of a cataract, which is good. I'm glad the patient didn't wait until it's a very dense rock in there. That makes life easier for both the patient and the surgeon. And here comes that second half. Important to keep good fluidics in these eyes. In these, let's say, nanophthalmic eyes even, remember there's a higher risk of things such as choroidal effusion or choroidal bleeding. And you want to keep that anterior chamber pressurized the whole time and not let the eye get too deflated. So have a sufficiently good infusion pressure here. Taking out these last little bits of lens material, looks like there's one little nuclear piece to the right of the incision. And once that's out, there you go. Now it's time for cortex removal. Of course, we have sped up the video to about twice normal speed, and so you can show you the whole case here. So you see the two extremes. Yesterday, 1499 was the video number. We showed you the high myope with a 30 millimeter eye. Here, video number 1500, we're showing you a tiny eye with a 20 millimeter axial length. And you as a surgeon have to be prepared to do all of the above and everything in between. By the way, congratulations on 1,500 videos. A new video every day for 1,500 days in a row. Never missed a day. Here comes the new lens going in the capsule bag. Let's see, single piece of acrylic lens. Remember too, this lens is thicker. 32 diopter lens is going to require a bigger incision and a thicker cartridge. Now, when this goes in the eye, what do you remember? 7L rule. There's the leading haptic like a number seven, the trailing haptic like the uh, capital letter L. That looks great. And look at the rex size, just about perfect. That six millimeter lens looks pretty massive in this eye because the eye is tiny and small white to white. So that goes in very nicely. In the USA, the highest power single piece of acrylic lens we can get is about a 40 diopter lens. That can be ordered. Anything above that, uh, it's really not available very easily in the USA, not FDA approved generally. So you may have to do other methods like put in the maximum power 40 doctor lens, let the patient heal up. And if you need to, you can always go back and do a piggyback lens later. Hydrating the main incision and the end of the case, this patient's gonna be very happy. So a beautiful case here. Thank you, Dr. Omar, for submitting the video and for using iowacalc.com, which as you know is totally free and so a very very accurate way of doing eye well calculations and again thank you guys for supporting cataractcoach.com and celebrating 
cataract surgery video number 1,500 every day in a row.